John Kelly for the Boxing Channel, alongside Hall of Famer Al Bernstein for another edition of Hot Topics. A lot to cover on this show. We'll talk about Broner, uh, Malinaji, Matisse, and more. Al, it should be exciting. It should. You know, a couple of big personalities in uh, Adrian Broner and Paul Malinaji, and a big puncher in Lucas Matisse. And about those two personalities, Al, Broner to meet Malinaji. Uh, at the Barclay Center in Brooklyn in uh, June, June 22nd to be exact. Mm -hmm. And Al, uh, will that fight with the two big personalities, will it live up to uh, the hype? Uh, will boxing purists enjoy a fight between Broner and Malinaji? Yeah, that's the question, isn't it? You know, uh, Paulie Malinaji, my broadcast partner on Showtime, and Adrian Broner are certainly good at promoting fights. They're great talkers. Uh, they have had already some clashes that are amazing leading up to this fight. But people ultimately want to see the fight. And clearly it's a matchup of Broner, who is a younger fighter, still in my mind not proven as an A-level fighter, though some people think he is. And Pauli Malnagy, a terrific boxer, but not such a big puncher. But I think this is not the one-sided match that some people make it out to be. In your role with uh, Showtime as a journalist, not a publicist, mm -hmm. and you take pride in that. Yeah. Uh, will you be able to play it down the middle with Paulie in the ring? You know, it's the toughest thing, John. I have to say, I did a, a fight. With, I've done two or three fights in the past with Antonio Tavaru, who was a former uh, colleague of mine, and a couple other people that I was announcing with. It's the most difficult thing you can do because. I mean, I think, as you said, I try very hard and I think th th take pride in the fact that I'm trying to be fair to all fighters. But when <laughs> you're doing a, a work with a colleague, now I in, did do a fight in which Paulie fought uh, uh, Ken Kano, uh, and I had Paulie losing the fight by two points. Um, and I felt kind of bad about it, but you know what? He understood. He, he totally got it. So I think you can take a step back and be objective, and that's my job, so you have to do it. That was Hot Topic 1. How about Hot Topic 2, Al? The site of that broner Malinaji fight will be the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. We've seen a resurgence of late in New York for the sport of boxing. We really have. And you know, in the old, old days, you know, when even before us, John, was there a time? Because uh, I'm a little older than you. Uh, th there was this feeling that people had to fight in New York. That it was important for their careers. And that for boxing to, to uh, thrive, Boxing had to be an important sport in that city, uh, mostly at Madison Square Garden. But now, the Barclays Center, which of course is the home uh, to the uh, New Jersey Nets, they're doing boxing on a regular basis. We've done a number of fights there, and what it's done is brought New York back into the boxing circle. And I do think it's important, you know, because it's a market that is traditionally important to the sport. And I think the more boxing you can have there, the better. New York City, obviously, the media capital of the world, outside of New York City, and of course Las Vegas, the yeah. ga uh, gambling and boxing yeah. capital of the world. Outside of New York City and Las Vegas, where are the hotbeds of boxing in this country and then maybe also around the world? Yeah, you know, around the world, of course, we know in Europe the sport is Tremendous, and that's why I laugh when people say boxing's dying because you know the Klitschko's put fifty thousand people in uh, in arenas in Germany, and uh, you know Frotch and Kessler have twenty some thousand at the O2 Arena, uh, and and you know it goes on in Europe, and the great fight fans, and here in the United States, and uh, Canelo Alvarez uh, when he fought Austin Trout. 38,000 people in the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. And so there's, there's a lot of areas, and Houston fighters have filled up uh, the arena in Houston, uh, and all around when you look in the United States. What boxing did some years ago was transition from just being a casino sport to getting it out to the fans. And that was a very important move. It really took hold about eight or nine years ago. One fighter that deserves a big following that hasn't really received it yet outside of his home country of Argentina is Lucas Matisse. That's hot topic number three on the show. They call him the machine. Al, I've had a chance to watch him ringside at the joint, the Hard Rock, a fight that mm -hmm. you called it yeah. for Showtime. What a fighter. He can crack. He, he can. And you know, he's starting to get that kind of recognition now. Uh, in his last fight against Lamont Peterson, he was, in fact, a machine. It was most, you know, Peterson was the IBF champion, though his title wasn't on the line, and no one had stopped Lamont Peterson, and certainly no one had done to him what Lucas Matisse did, uh, you know, knocking him out and in dramatic fashion. And I think it showed people what I have felt for a while, uh, not only in the Mike Dallas fight that you saw, but against Elusigan Jose, a terrific fighter who doesn't get credit for for being as good as he is. Matisse was fantastic against him and has put together a string of victories. And in his last, I think, 12 fights, 
He's at something like 24 knockdowns. That's a ridiculous stat uh, and shows the power that he has. I think Lucas Matisse is a, uh, a, a rising superstar in the sport. What happens in early September when Matisse gets a crack at Danny Garcia, September 7th? Uh, what will happen in that fight? Well, it's interesting because, you know, Lucas Matisse gets his, finally, his world title shot against Garcia, who has two of the world titles and also the lineal title as well. Garcia is a very good fighter, undefeated, probably a bit underrated because he's one of those people uh, that does everything well but nothing spectacularly well. But the sum of the parts equal more than the whole, you know? And I think that uh, Danny Garcia is a really good fighter, but the question is, against Lucas Mitise, you either have to be a brilliant boxer who can move on him and go the distance, as Zab Judah did, even though I thought uh, Matisse beats Zab Judah when they fought, and also Darren, uh, Devin Alexander won a decision against Matisse. I also thought Matisse won that fight, but Alexander was boxing a lot. Garcia's not really a boxer. Or you have to have unimaginable power that can hurt Matisse, and Matisse has a tremendous chin. Well, Garcia doesn't have that either. So uh, Danny Garcia and his dad Angel uh, are going to have to devise some kind of strategy that keeps Lucas Matisse at bay and uses the skills that Danny Garcia does have to win this fight. It's not going to be an easy task for them. That'll wrap up another episode of Hot Topics for Showtime's Al Bernstein. I'm John Kelly reporting for the Boxing Channel.